Hello, everyone. Welcome to another 2023 Fall Docs screening. My name is Armando Samudio, and I am the Public Programs and Events Coordinator here at IDA. For our blind and low vision attendees, I'm going to describe myself. I am wearing a white t-shirt, a blue button-up, glasses, and I am sitting in front of a white wall. Thank you to our media sponsors, KCRW and Variety for sponsoring our 2023 Fall Docs. This evening, we'll have a conversation between film journalist Robert Abeli, co-director Fernando Truba, and co-director Javier Mariscal, whose film They Shot the Piano Player premiered at the Toronto International Film Festival. To see more amazing films like this, please visit www.documentary.org forward slash fall docs. Now, before we get started, I would like to offer a brief land acknowledgement. We recognize the Gabrielino Tongva as the past, present, and future caretakers of the land, water, and cultural resources in the unceded territory of Los Angeles. Thank you so much to Andrea Lust for ASL interpreting this discussion. And with that, I will pass it on to Robert. Thank you. Hi, I'm Robert Abley. I'm a Los Angeles-based critic and journalist, and I'm here to moderate a uh, conversation with the uh, wonderful directors of They Shot the Piano Player, uh, Fernando Troeba and Javier Mariscal. Um, they uh, collaborated um, on this as they did on their film Chico and Rita. And um, I'll start off by saying for our uh, blind and low vision attendees, I'll describe myself. I have black glasses, I have a beard, I'm wearing a light colored shirt and I'm in front of a bookcase. Um, Fernando, do you wanna describe yourself? Yeah, I'm in front of a bookcase too at my home in Madrid. I have a blue t-shirt and uh, my beard and uh, I'm hair as white already. <laughs> And I'm the Javier. director with Javier Mariscal of The Show the Piano Player. And Javier, do you want to describe yourself? Yeah, um, I am Javier Mariscal. I am also the director of The They Show the Piano Player. My hair is white and I have a beard very similar to Fernando. I have also a a dark blue t-shirt and I, I am in, in my studio in the country. I, I live in outside Barcelona and I am very happy to talk with LA, Los Angeles. Wow. <laughs> well, we're happy to have you guys uh, talking about this too. Um, I, I want to use a musical phrase to describe the situation here. The, the band is back together again. Um, like with you two, after making Chico and Rita, you're 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 back with another movie. Um, was it always a plan to uh, reunite at some point and make another film together? No, but uh, I must say that uh, I had a project that uh, uh, of uh, making a documentary uh, that I start uh, working and doing research and interviews before we did Chico and Rita. And then during the Chico and Rita was, uh, was for me a completely new experience. I, I, I'm not an animation guy. Uh, Xavi has made animation, illustration, pa painting, uh, all this stuff. But for me, it was a new, new experience, a new language. And, and, uh, uh, but uh, while we, are, we were working in Chico and Rita, I, I keep telling uh, uh, Javier about this, the story of this uh, uh, 
Brazilian pianist, and I keep him informed of, of my research for that, uh, uh, that movie. And in a moment, uh, after Chico and Rita, I realized that the that even if the movie was a documentary, it should be an animation documentary. And I proposed to Javier to, if if he wanted to, to repeat, no, uh, to to do a new movie together. Javier, do you want to speak to that? Add anything? Well, working with Fernando is a big gift. I think this is 35 movie he made it. Uh, he know perfectly how to do. And he has a, a beautiful story because he's a, a, a very great musician, completely nobody know, and with a very tragic story, but also a wonderful story. Is is the story become with a lot of light and happiness in a special moment in Rio de Janeiro in the 60s when a very little young people started with a, a very new and crazy way to sing, to compose, to make the lyrics Bossa Nova, wow. And this pianist was there and was a very intelligent and very wonderful. But one moment disappeared and the movie finished with the darkness of the violence with uh, black, very black. But uh, Fernando had a very good idea if we made it and animated everything, we will do something very realistic. Tenorio, we can give a life again. And it will be a, a, a real one. And, and we, we can show with the family and play his music. And if you know, with animation, it is a, a, a little contradictory, but it's true. It's more realistic if we do it, because otherwise, uh, Tenorio will be an actor. So an actor is an actor, but if everything is throwing, you believe it and say, OK, I believe it. And when you see Tenorio play the piano, say, wow, it's Tenorio, wonderful. That's definitely the feeling you get watching it. Uh, Fernando, we're in a very interesting time for like these kind of hybrid documentaries where you mix something real with something imagined. Uh, so is it exciting to work in that form? Yeah, more, uh, we didn't imagine so much what we we illustrate or, or we try to to animate the the memories of the people. No, that we that we uh, portray in the movie is um, the the show the piano player is like like a puzzle, no, a big puzzle, and a puzzle that we knew from the start that we will never have all the pieces. It it will be always incomplete, no, because there is a big mystery and there is a lot of holes uh, in the real history. But what we have are the memories of all the people that we met uh, that knew Tenorio, who were family, friends, who were with him, who played with him, or who were related anyway with uh, him and his story. So what we thought is uh, that with animation, we could, instead of just watching people talk, we, we could recreate, uh, give a, a color and, and, uh, and music and sound to all these memories. No, so that was really the challenge uh, for us uh, in, a, in a pictorial, cinematographic, plastic, uh, artistically uh, way. No, it was very exciting to 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 go into all these 
brains of different people and find the, the color, the texture, the animation for every one of these stories who are like uh, movies inside the movie. Oh, I, I love that. Um, it, it, well, a, but it must have been great to talk to all those great Brazilian music legends. I mean, I love Bossa Nova too. So it's exciting to see them and then to find out that, you know, someone like, um, uh, you know, you know, one of them is thinking about a movie when he writes songs. I mean, that must have been very exciting for you to find out, right? That movies are inspiring Bossa Nova. Yeah, it for me, imagine how exciting it was that uh, I always say that uh, uh, I decide uh, when I was 15, 16, I decided I want to make movies the day I saw The Wild Child by Francois Truffaut. So 40 years later, I'm in Brazil talking to Milton Nascimento, one of the greatest musicians, singers, and composers in Brazil. And suddenly he told me he started writing songs after watching Jules Jim by Truffaut, and that Truffaut changed his life too. But I I haven't said to him that it was my case, no. So for me it was a, an incredible surprise too. It's, it's curious the way that uh, uh, this movie is about music, but there is like a subtext about cinema too in parallel, no? About with and the with the Nouvelle Vague and 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 uh, Bossa Nova being so simultaneously. Um, happening in Rio and uh, and uh, Paris in, in 59, no? No, it's, it's, it's one of the great things to learn in the movie. And then Javier, for you to, to animate the start of Bossa Nova, which I know you come from an underground art scene yourself. So did you feel a connection to to, to these to these musicians who are starting something new um, and, and and making it really like powerful and popular? Uh, well, Truffaut changed the life of many people, and I hope this movie changed also the life of many people too. <laughs> no, I, you, you know, for for me, is is a a, cha a a challenger. I don't know. It's 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 a moment fantastic working with Fernando. He, you know, he he believed very much, sometimes too much, in my drawings, and I have a lot of freedom, and also a lot of connection with Fernando. Fernando bring fantastic audios, fantastic interview, different accents, and the the first is just listen and try to understand what the movie need and uh, f find define a, a style for for to make the the image and well all the time the story must be very realistic because it is a documentary and everything every corner every car every church every everything must to be with a name, a surname, it must be a really realistic, and we're talking about 60s, mm -hmm. must be every object define what what was the aesthetic and, and the, the feeling of the 60s. And if we're talking about 2010, it's real 2010, and the, la the light and the, the traffic, everything. And well, after that, is is a one year period to to developing the 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 creation, and it's very important to to have a, a very nice group, and I find really good uh, artists help me. To developing all the characters, and I try also to to make um, a little bit some sometimes more and sometimes menos uh, caricature because it's for example the 
the faces, they are bigger and the hands. And well, all the time we try to make a caricature, but and in a very realistic way. But also it's, it's a pleasure to, for example, the protagonist, Jeff, mm -hmm. he lives in Brooklyn. And I, I, I say, Fernando, how do you think is the house of Jeff? No? <laughs> so it, when you must understand who is this journalist and, and to, well, of course, he have a books like you behind and what books he have, no? And how, how is the house? The, the house say many things to, to the, the character. So design and and to uh, all the object and, and the ambience and mm -hmm. you know it's it's a love is the the kitchen and the well everything is together and is and Fernando ah oh, okay ah oh, I see why you don't put a book of Brassens because Fernando loves Brassens and I think yeah Jeff also, I, I think he loved Brassens, uh, the, the big singer of France. Well, it's, it's like, uh, well, we're working a lot, but uh, in the same time, people pay, pay us for funny because it's, it's, it's wonderful. Make, uh, you know, it's, uh, I'm, I'm sorry, I'm, maybe I don't ask or your question, but no, no, you I, you, you go okay. right to it. In fact, you're making me think, um, Fernando. You're making me wonder um, why you chose uh, to to create a character and, and maybe not put yourself as the as the as the star of, of the movie, since you were doing well, the interviews. I I I don't really create because uh, the character is is mostly myself. I I I did I did just a small change because it makes more sense. You know, uh, when the, the Brazilian music didn't really have a big impact in Spain or in Spanish music and culture as it did in the, in the American okay. uh, music in the, in the 60s. Uh, there was a, a very strong interrelation uh, between American and Brazilian musicians. It was a very rich thing because they were a lot influenced by American music. And at the same time, the Americans recognized uh, Brazilian music and became fascinated by it. So also the politics of uh, uh, that in the, is the, uh, the positive uh, thing. The negative thing is how much the, the uh, some American governments were involved in some uh, things that uh, uh, historical things in in Latin America in that uh, in these times, no. So there was a a very strong relationship too in this. Uh, so it makes a lot of sense, more sense that uh, this man is is, is um American journalist than mm -hmm. a Spanish director. I I I thought that uh, I should just change this thing, no. But I tried. You know, for me, it's, it's very important that the, the movie is, is real and it's a documentary, you know. In, in, the, in the same way uh, uh, that uh, the comic books, graphic novels, has in the last years, they are growing up and telling more complex and complicated stories and mm -hmm. real stories too many times. Also, uh, uh, there is one thing that in literature, there are writers, novelists, who are, who are doing real novels. No, for example, mm. I, I, uh, Emmanuel Carrer, the French writer, no, that I admire a lot. He is making literature with reality, with real things, not creating a story or inventing. No, he's telling stories that uh, uh, he knows firsthand. Mm -hmm. This is the ca case with us. Only he's putting the style of uh, the, the, the literary the thing, you know, the literature in it, not just uh, uh, 
So what we are adding to this real story is the cinematographic um, uh, narrative. No, it's, it's like a parallel attitude to it. No, but keeping it real. No, for example, in any moment we we didn't put uh, someone speaking uh, for Tenorio because yeah. we no because the voices are real. No, and the testimonies and the uh, and the interviews is, is all real material. So um, there was a big compromise with, with reality in this, in this way. Also, what was the most challenging scene to get right from a, you know, from a story perspective or maybe from an anim animation perspective, what was the most challenging scene? Xavi, um, what do you think? Uh, uh, no, 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 there, no, no, there were no. some very delicate ones, no, like uh, when the, when the uh, the journalist Jeff goes to the ESMA, no, to this uh, uh, military building who was a uh, torture and uh, an assassination center. That that's kind of really delicate, not to approach this in animation and the way you are going to treat it um, narratively and 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 plastically, no? uh, in image, visually. No? Uh, yeah, there were very difficult things, how to deal with, uh, with um, for example, uh, we decided that we were going to do the whole thing in animation. No? We, we could have temptations here and there to use the real, uh, some real images, no? but we, work with these real images, but uh, making uh, Xavi making them into animation, no? So to to do uh, an animated documentary, hundred percent. Javier, are you drawing and 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 creating while Fernando is out interviewing, or are you waiting until a, a certain point to start working on your part? Uh, no, because. Sorry, I, I answered you that. As I told you at the beginning, uh, when I did the interview, the interviews and the research was just before we did Chico and Rita. And okay. I was not thinking in animation. So when I proposed uh, Chavi to, to, do, to make the movie in animation, this part, all these uh, filmed interviews were already done. So you've been working on this for decades. Yeah, I started in, in 2005 with uh, with all the research. So Javier, when did you let me join in and, and start working on it? Mm, five years ago, I think. Okay. But uh, Fernando and me, we are very good friends and in many many times I traveled to Madrid and I, st I stayed with Fernando and in this time he was completely upset with Tenorio completely in love is is my friend and he dreamed mm -hmm. with Tenorio so was in the restaurants in the bar the conversation was you know Javier Tenorio was a real nice person. And Fernando, yeah, you tell me all you know. And was so interesting to, to see all the project and, and how he had more new interviews and 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 always I love the project. I, I think Fernando, this is a great story. And it's very nice because after that he don't forget, but put everything like in a big box, and and mid, I don't know, maybe nine years or ten years after, sleeping everything, and one day I say, please, Fernando, make a script, and he do it, and it's not was not easy. He do it in in two months, I think. Okay. Amazing. And after the, the script, we're looking for for the financials and also how the technical also and 
how we can do uh, and so quickly we 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 try to 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 find um, a, a producer from Brazil, of course, but uh, was in a very bad period for Brazil. Was Bolsonaro president, and was impossible. So, it's a it's a film. It's it's a movie, very very carioca, very very real, very Brazilian, but made it from uh, Netherlands, Amsterdam, Paris, Toulouse, uh, Bespina, Lisbon, uh, Barcelona, and of course, Madrid. And I, I, I was the last week in, in Rio, and everybody loved it, and everybody feels so, so, so close to, to the movie. And I was crying. I was so excited there. And people give me a lot of love. And what I think what everybody tries to find is people love after you do the drawing or the novel or even an interview. Yeah, I'm wondering. I, I, oh, I go was, ahead, Fernando. Yeah, I was the material for me was kind of over, overwhelming, no? Because I did like 140 interviews, uh, 150 hours of interviews. So for uh, uh, from from that time to to when we did this movie, uh, I did another six movies, maybe. <laughs> yeah. So because I was. I needed, and I, I I never stopped thinking about that one, no. But I I needed to find the the the, the language to do that. I didn't want it. Uh, I realized I, I had at the beginning I had doubts about making a documentary in the in a more conventional way or making maybe a book, no. So it was the the discovery and the of the possibilities in animation for. Or making it at the same time documentary, and that really helps me to find to find the, the, the final uh, uh, form for for the story. And did you enjoy? Uh, how did Jeff Goldblum get involved, and what was it like to work with him? Yeah, Jeff, uh, we worked together thirty years ago, and we've been uh, friends since uh, then. No, I remember when when we did. Uh, uh, that movie uh, in Paris, uh, uh, he always had in his uh, dress dressing room a, a keyboard. No, so every time I enter his uh, dressing room to talk or uh, for the movie, he was playing Gershwin, Thelonious Monk, Cole Porter. He's <laughs> he's a very good musician. No, and so it makes a lot of sense. Uh, first. He has for me one of the best voices in the world, not just in American movies, in the world. It's, and his voice, he used his voice, he's a very jazzy voice. No, he used his voice like uh, a jazz musician use his instrument, his solos, he does things, imprevisible things, no? And uh, also he's a, a pianist who loves jazz, and then he's my friend. So it was perfect. When I, I without talking to him, when I was writing the screenplay, I, I put my character the name of Jeff, no? Hoping that finally he was going, gonna do it. <laughs> so this is the you made a movie where you get to be Jeff Goldblum. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <Who won? laughs> um, you know, there, there's a line in the movie that Malena says, um, she says he had he sat at the piano and the world stopped. And I'm wondering if that is what making art is like for both of you. Like the world just stops and you're totally there. Yeah, I think I think when you watch a movie that you love, you don't want the movie to to stop to end. You want to to keep living inside some of the the movies that are your favorite movies. It's the same when you. Sometimes you can be watching some Matisse paintings or David Hockney paintings, and 
and you want to stay there. No, you would like to be part of it, to, to go inside and stay there because you look around in the world and, and most of the time is not a, a most of the time is not a nice place. Mm -hmm. We should work to make it a, a better place, but my God. And Javier, is it like that for you? Does the world stop when you make art? Mm. I'm, I'm sorry, I'm, I'm, I'm de very que, bad. Eh, Cuando dice Malena que cuando oía el piano de Tenorio, eh, sí. el mundo se paraba, ¿no? Si, si tú tienes sí. con el arte y eso te pasa un poco esto. Uh, yeah, I, well, I, I love music. I, I think it's, 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 it's come from directly from, from the skin. And when I draw in, I try to listen good music. And during during the process, for example, this this moment with Malena, I, I think in, in blue because it's it's a it's a color of very special. It's like a spirit. It's like they are in the clouds. They are in the sky, without diamond, with a lot of love inside. No? Malena with Tenorio is in the sky with blue 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 a very deep blue and and when when you draw you know also i i make in in this case uh, uh some animations in a very strange way and all the time you you have the music here and and it helps a lot and in 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 a moment also i i want in the movie to make a, a homage, uh, look at how beautiful they are the saxophone or how beautiful is the object of a trumpet. And behind that is a people, they working and make it this incredible instrument. And, and in the movie also is like, a, look at how is, a very mixed, uh, very technology, and also very artisan, and you know the saxophone, the drawings, always, and you know, mm. well, I all I can say is uh, everything you just talked about is very real and very. Uh, and very there in this wonderful movie. So I want to thank you both for 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 talking to us about it and giving all the Bossa Nova fans out there um, a really exciting um, and interesting movie about music and, and art. Um, and I want to thank, thank you, you both. Ever. Thank you, Javier, and thank you, Fernando. And What's up, thank you, Robert. And I hope one day I will speak more more quickly better English <laughs> no, you were great you were great thank you and then thank you all for joining us we'll see you again thank soon you. thank you thank you